everybody, this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer, and I am here to do another playthrough video. I am going to be playing Final Girl, and tonight I'm playing a different bad guy in a different location. Tonight I'm playing Dr. Fright. Think of him, if you know the movie series, The uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, think of him along those lines. And Maple Lane is that neighborhood where kids go to sleep, and they encounter Dr. Fright, and he kills them in their sleep using all kinds of crazy methods. Now there's some interesting rules with this particular scenario that I'm going to cover, but first I want to get the game set up. So the first thing I need to do is, um, well let's go ahead and do this. So I need to set his upper half and his lower half. So there are three cards for his upper half. I'll just shuffle these real quick and I'm just going to, I'm not even looking at the deck but you can't tell that. I'm going to pick this one and I'm going to put it face down. The rest of these go away. Then there are four for the lower half. This is his dark power that triggers when he gets five bloodless or four bloodless. And so I'm just going to shuffle these up. I'm going to look away and pick this one and put it right here. Okay, so these go away. Next, the setup. There are six setup cards. Five, oh, yeah, five. And this basically tells me where to put the victims, the killer, and my own token. So we'll shuffle these up a little bit. Let's just take the first one. The first one is called Revenge. All right, so it tells me that one victim will go in this house, two in this house, uh, one here, two here, one here, and one in the street, and one up here. Is that, oh, and one right here. Oh, and another one right here. There's a lot of people in the streets. All right. Uh, right here, right here. Oh, there's another one. I keep, you know. And then the killer, of course, is right in the center. Okay, so this is, the killer will start in the middle. He's got easy access. He starts with four uh, horror uh, counts, so I put it on the four, which means I'll be rolling two dice for all the uh, rolls until I can get that down. My token starts right here uh, next to him. Now, you can't see this map, but there are doors to all, there's like walkways and doors to the houses. You can't just walk <coughs> or sprint in. There are two new cards in this scenario called Convince. They cost one, uh, one time on the time track to purchase, and then depending on what you roll, you have to convince people to let you in the house. Once you're in a house, all the houses can be searched once. Well, they can be searched as often as you need, but once you find one item, that house is searched and you put an X token uh, in it to indicate it's been searched. All right, so these one will go here with the close calls. I'm just going to have to remember that there's a bunch of different ones here that I can purchase. Um, let's do our health. So I'm going to be playing uh, Sheila. I mainly picked her because she has six starting health. The other one was Nancy, who has four. I figured let's give myself the best odds. If she can cover her, if she can rescue six victims, her special ability will resolve. And I don't know what that is. I haven't looked at it. Uh, I like I like to be surprised. So I'm going to be playing Sheila. So one, two, three, four, five hearts. And Dr. Fright starts with nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I haven't put the last heart on. So these hearts right here, some of them have blanks. Some of them have one heart. One of them has one heart. One of them has two hearts. And one of them has three hearts. When you get to the last your last health, when the, if the victim should knock me down to the last health, I flip this token over, and if there's any hearts on it, it means I get like an extra chance. So I'm going to put this one here. I haven't looked at it. And for him, I'm going to take this one and put it here. He has the exact same thing. When you Just when you think you've killed him, he might have some extra hearts. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack these carefully so that I can't see the bottom of them, and I'm going to put them back in the tray so I don't know what they are. Let's do the tarot cards. Now, there are tarot cards for Maple Lane, which has this maple leaf. And then there are tarot cards for Dr. Fright, which has his symbol. And what you're supposed to do is um, shuffle this deck and then draw uh, nine or ten. I think it's ten. Uh, you, sh you, you draw a number of cards. And at the end of the killer phase, uh, er er at the end of each killer phase, you draw a tarot deck card. When the tarot deck is empty... When it goes to zero, you reveal his dark power, which uh, is usually not 
not a good thing for the player. It's usually a really bad, bad, bad thing. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we'll draw. Let me just double check. I think it's ten. I just want. I want to make sure I do this right. So on the, under the setup, <clears throat> it'll say uh, for the um, horror card, shuffle the location, health markers, take nine. No, no, take the killer cards, location cards, and so, then deal at ten. Okay, so it is ten. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All right, I'm going to take this deck. That should be suitably random. I'm going to put this aside. We won't be needing those. Next is the item deck. Normally, you have three item decks that have four cards each, and you search different areas. But in this example, Maple Street has four, um, four different areas that you can search, and they're by quadrant, northwest, northeast, southeast, southwest. So what you do is you shuffle these up, and you put uh, three... Well, yeah, three cards in four piles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, that's right. Twelve. And then you flip over the top in each one. So you do get a chance to see kind of what's available. So I've got Lucky Die, which says you get to reroll, discard to reroll any or all dice. There's a bike, a megaphone, and. A rifle. <laughs> now, unfortunately, you cannot hurt Dr. Fright while you are awake. This game has two phases, awake and asleep. And that is done with this special deck right here, which I'll deal with this when I get to it. But basically, while I'm awake, I can't hurt him, he can't hurt me. But there are cards that can force me to fall asleep, or I can choose to go to sleep by doing a short rest or a long rest. And then what happens is I flip to asleep and there's this little mini game in here where you're trying to hide from Dr. Fright in the boiler room but we'll get to that uh, we'll get to that when it when that happens I already did the setup so I can put that aside the event card so the event card you'll draw up to three of these depending on how far Dr. Fright gets along in his bloodlust but the first one um, the first one will be under construction Roll a die and place a roadblock token on the following exit. All right, so this is automatically meaning that one of these exits is not going to be useful for me. So you roll a d6, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. I rolled a 6, which is north or south. Roll a die and place a roadblock token on the following, north or south. So I can, do, I can choose north or south. So there's a roadblock token right here. I assume it's this one. Yeah, it's this little... Uh, exclamation yield sign um, <clears throat> so I can do north or south I guess I'll just put it on the north exit so the north exit will not be <laughs> available as an escape all right cards are up I start with six time um, I'm gonna put these dice over here out of the way so you can see the time track uh, I've got my hearts what else uh, victims are out uh, everything is done. I'll punch the I'll punch the tokens out as I need them. I think we are ready to go. So the first thing we do is the action phase, which is I can play action cards. I start with six and only six. <clears throat> now remember, I don't have a convince card in my hand right now, so <clears throat> excuse me, I cannot get in anybody's house. But there are some victims that are out on the street right now. So the first thing I try to always do is lower this um, horror track. So I'm going to play a focus card, and I'm going to roll two dice, and I'm looking to lower the focus down to one so I can use three dice. And I got a single star and a discard. So the discard, I'm going to get rid of the weak attack and short rest. This is typical, uh, and that turns this into a star. And so now I get to lower this by one, and I gain two time. So, good use of the focus. Uh, I want to do it again. Let's do it again. And I got a single star and two. And I cannot discard two. So, I'll get, I'll just, I lower this by one, but I lose a time. All right. So, all my focus are gone. <clears throat> I'm going to do a walk now. Now, I'm in this house. So, technically, I can search it. But 
I don't have a search card in my hand, so I can't do it. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to leave that. You can always leave the house, but to get back in, I got to do a convince. Now, in an empty house, you do not have to convince. It's only if there's a victim in, because like they've locked the front door, right? All right, so let's do this. I got one star, which allows me to move up to one space, and I lose a time. And I'm going to move here to this victim, and I'm going to play another walk and say, come on, follow me. And I did get a star, so I can move this victim here and say go, and I, I saved my first victim. Now, the question is, what do I want to do? I can put it anywhere. I can take an improvised action card take a long rest action card, reduce the, the the horror track, gain two time, move a space, or gain two hearts. Right now, I think it's going to be better for me to take this and move it down one. So now I get to roll three dice. And that is the end of my action phase. The planning phase, you basically use your time to purchase cards. So I know I'm going to need to be going into houses. So I'm going to purchase Convince for one, so it's down to five. I'm going to buy a Sprint so I can move fast. That goes down by two. Um, he can't hurt me while I'm awake. So I, right now I'm not too worried about like defending myself. But I do need to be rescuing folks. So um, I think what I'm going to buy is a Search for two. That knocks me down to one. And then... Uh, this walk goes away. Uh, I've got a sprint, a search, a convince, and I'm going to buy a reroll just in case I need that. And that will knock me down to zero. So I have purchased my cards. Um, those go here. And at the end of the upkeep phase, these will go back in the tableau so I can buy them next turn. So now it is the killer phase. <clears throat> well, the killer phase says kill someone on your spot. Thankfully, there's nobody there, so he didn't get to kill anybody. And then we he doesn't move, so we get to draw a card, and it says slash her. He's going to stab anybody in his spot. There's nobody there. Then he's going to move to the nearest victim and stab. Well, I have three choices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do random. Um, there are numbers on here that correspond to where he would go. So there's a one two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just going to roll it. He goes two. So he goes down here and he, he stabs her. So she's dead or it's dead. And bloodlust moves up one when you kill a victim. And then it says all victims that are not in a home panic. So if they are, if they're in the street, they're going to panic. All right. So there are one, two, two victims. So let's do this top victim. I rolled a two. They are going to flee to here, to this house. And uh, victims can move in, in and out of houses for free. They don't have to convince. And then this one is going to move four, which is into this house. So good. They're in houses. That's, that's not bad. It's not good for me, but they're not moving towards uh, Dr. Fright. All right, so that's the terror card. <clears throat> Panic phase is normally if there's another victim in the killer spot after he kills, or if there's any victims in the killer spot, they will panic and run, but there are no killers. Now it's the upkeep phase. So I take these cards, which are all zero cost, and I put them in the zero cost area, but I can't buy them. I've already bought my cards, and that is the end of the upkeep phase. So now it's my turn. Now remember, I'm getting to roll three dice now. So I need... I need to uh, get in here and save some victims. Now, there's three in this house, so it's my best advantage to try and convince them because you can take up to two victims out at a time. Uh, so I'm going to do a sprint and because I need to go one. I need to go one, and then, well, a sprint may not... If I go through one, two, three... The only way I can get in here is to go one, two, three, to go in the killer space and then do a successful convince, which I'm not sure I can do that. So let's do, let's just do the sprint and try to get to this house. One, two, three. Oh, I can only go in at this spot. Oh, that's not good. All right, but it and and this is blocked, so I gotta get them out and then I gotta bring them out. Ooh, 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 ooh. Not good. Okay, so. 
let's just roll, let's do a sprint and see how far I get. So I get to roll three dice, and what I really need is two stars. And I got two stars. So I get to move up to three spaces. One, two, three. Then the rules say, now, to enter the house. Okay. To enter an occupied house from an adjacent space, you must convince your neighbors to use, you must use a convince card. So it doesn't require a walk card. It's just, I need to move in here. So I'm going to play the convince card. <clears throat> the sprint goes away. Now, the convince says, uh, there, most of the cards only need two stars. That's the best you can do. But this convince card actually has a three-star option. If you, get, if you get the three stars, you get to not only enter the house, but you get to take the, the item for free without doing a search. So three stars here would be great. And of course, I didn't get any. So I'm going to play my close call to re-roll all of them. Uh, yeah, I want to re-roll all of them. And I got two stars, um, which is not what I wanted, but hey, that's fine. So I move into this house. The convince worked. And now, since I can't convince them to follow me, all I can do is search. Now, the Northwest is... This one. It's the lucky die. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do a search. And I got two stars. Oop, that was a star, I promise. Two stars, which says take the two item cards at, at your space and choose one. Place the other top other on top face up, face up or underneath. Alright, so I get to look at the, the next card. It's a crucifix. Discard to ignore any horror level increase. Horror level is this track. Or end an enemy's movement when they're in an adjacent space. Well, yeah, I'm going to take that one. Yeah, that's a great one. All right, and so I can choose to put this on the bottom or the top. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on the bottom because I don't. You're not allowed to flip over the top card to see what it is. Now it's unknown, and I have to place an X in this house to indicate I have searched it. All right. And that is the end of my turn. I have no more cards. You know what I forgot to be doing? I, I, I forgot to the time track. So I set it to six. I played a sprint, and I moved three, and I lost one. Then I did a convince, and I did two stars, which didn't take any time. I played the close call, which didn't cost any time. And then I did a search, and I rolled two, so it lost the time. So I have four time cards. So I get all of the zero costs back. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you can have up to ten cards in your hand. So with this four, I could buy four cards. So first thing I need to do is buy a sprint, because i got to get these guys out of here. So the sprint will cost me two. Now I'm down to two. Um, I am going to do a... I don't need to search. I've got three dice. I can do a, I could buy something, let's see. I can only buy a guard, search, or close call, or convince. Let's go ahead and get the convince, because I might be able to walk and get this guy out. So we will see. And the convince cost me one, so I've got one more point left. I'll just go ahead and buy the last reroll for zero. That is the end of my turn. Um, did I buy the sprint? I did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got nine cards. That is the end of my planning phase. Killer phase. The killer will kill anyone in his spot. There's nobody there. Then he draws a card. But if this is a dream, then I can, if you are awake, immediately discard this card and resolve the next tarot card. All right? So the tarot deck is going down. Ooh, it came right through the yard. He's going to target the nearest victim and move and slash. The nearest victim is in this house. So he moves into the house and kills one, all right, which moves this up. And now he's at, oh, by the way, I forgot this. When he got there, this should have dropped. My fault. I've got to buy that back. <clears throat> um, anyway, that probably would have made a, made it. I don't think it would have made a difference because I never rolled three stars, but possibly. Uh, all right, so if the killer is in a house, Move it to any other house in the same quadrant with a victim. Well, he goes to this house, then kill. Ah! 
and that moves this up, and this drops by one again. And it says, then draw an event card. So I have to draw an event card, which is place four new victims in any house that contains at least one victim. If none do, place them in the intersection. All right, so place four victims. Good for me, but also bad for me. It's more victims for him to kill. In at least one victim in, in any house. Place four victims in any house that contains at least one victim. Okay, so you got to put them all in the same house. Well, you know what? I'm going to put them all in here because they're far away from him. So uh, that's good. Place four victims in any house that contains at least one victim. It doesn't say any houses. It just says any one house. So they're all grouped together. It says party in the burbs. So there's a party there. That's what the explanation is. All right. Uh, he does not, there is no, um, there is no panic phase, so, because there's no other victims in the house. Um, uh, upkeep phase. Um, the upkeep is all of these cards go back into the pile, so, let's see, search, close call, convince, and sprint. Where is, search is here, sorry. All right, I'm trying to get that light up. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the, hit the microwave. Hold on just one second. All right, the lights in my shop turn off automatically. Okay, so now it is my turn. <clears throat> All right, so I just got to remember I got this crucifix. Discard to ignore any horror level increase or, you know what? I Since I forgot to move this up here, I'm going to get rid of this to be fair because I would have used that to stay and then it, it moved and moved. So there we go. So that, that's how I'm going to even up the game. All right, so now I need to I need to focus to get that thing down again. So I'm going to focus. I got a, uh, I'll, I'll throw away the weak attack and short rest to turn that to a star, which allows me to, to lower this by one. And I, lower, I lose a time. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 that's gone. I need to get out of this house. Walk, walk, focus. Let's do the sprint. Um, well, let's do the other focus. I really need to be rolling three dice. All right, come on, come on, come on. Got the star. So this goes back into the one. So now I get to roll three. And since I rolled one, this drops by one. And use that. All right, so now I get to go three dice, and I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna do a sprint. <laughs> I'll play my close call to re-roll all those. Yeah, you gotta be kidding! All right, I just got one star, which allows me to move two spaces. So I'm gonna tell two of these come with me, and we're gonna go one, two, and then that lowered me by one time. So I've got three left. I really could do a walk. I'm going to do a walk because it says move up to two. If I can move two, I can get two more out. So let's go. We're trying to go for two stars here, and I didn't get it. But I'm going to have to change. Uh, I can't do it. I can't do it. So it's a failure. Yeah, I can't. I, I can't give up these two to change to a star because then it only moves one space. Uh, but I don't really have a choice because otherwise I'm going to lose two time and won't have anything to buy. So I will get rid of these to make one of these a star, which will allow me to move them one more space. The walk goes away. I now am out of cards, and that is the end of my turn, and I only have two time left. So the, for the two, I am going to buy... Um, I'm going to buy a... Well... I need to get back in the house, and I'll be here, and I can enter the house there. So I'll buy the convince for one, and I'll buy the close call for one. So I'm down to zero, and that is it. All right, his turn. Um, nobody in his space to stab, so we draw a terror card. Unless Until the next killer phase, all victims in your space immediately panic. <laughs> 
All right, so in my, uh, they are in my space. So let's see where they panic to. They're either going to run back here or run forward where I need them to be. So the, the first one rolls a one, which moves here. That's good. And the second one roll, goes two, which also, they're where I want them. That's fine. Okay, then the victim will target the nearest one and move, which is he's got to go out the door. One space, and then it says if there's a victim, he kills. There's no victim there. If Dr. Fright did not attack you and you are awake, you fall asleep. Okay, so now we are asleep, and I can be injured. So the way this works is, underneath here are four cards. I can show you, the. they're called the boiler room. They are face down. You take this, you put it underneath, and then you flip it over, and I'm asleep. All right? Now there are four cards underneath here, and there it's each one is has a four has lines that divide it into four sections. To wake up, you slide a card up, down, left, or right to reveal two of those quadrants in the next card. If Doctor Sleep is there, he kills you or he he attacks you. If he's not, you get away and you can try to wake up. So. I, I don't know. There may not, but but while I'm asleep, victims will not follow you. So until I wake up, I can't get them out. So let's do this. So this is a little finicky. A lot of people have complained about this part of the game. So I'm going to try it. So you have to be very careful. So I'm not actually looking at the deck. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip one card, the top card up, so I can get my finger under it. And I'm just going to slide it carefully up. All right, so I slide it up. And there's no Dr. Fright. So I was successful in avoiding him there. All right. Now, I take this card and the revealed card. I can slide them up, left, right, or down. This gets tricky. So what I'm going to do, somebody, I, I read this somewhere. Hold on just one second. You can take a piece of painter's tape to secure it so they move together like that. All right, so this time what I want to do is I want to move them left. So I'm just going to carefully get the, get the bottom card, and I'm going to slide it this way to reveal the card beneath it. Ah, and there's a Dr. Fright icon. So he attacks me for two damage, so I lose two hearts. I need to wake up because <laughs> I've got to wake up. Um... I guess I could do the. You can do this on in, at any point. Uh, so I think it. Or I think you do it at the at the end of the killer phase. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah, I think it says at the end of the killer phase, which is where I'm at. So uh, you may move it. And you, okay, when you are awake, awake and asleep. Um, okay. In order to kill, you have to be. Okay, never mind. I don't remember if Dr. Fright resolves a killer. Okay, I, I think I have to keep going in order to try and wake up. I can stay asleep if I want to attack him, but I don't want to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of tape, and I'm going to connect these three, So and I'm going to move it up. Now, here's the deal. Because he's in the lower right quadrant, I know that on the card beneath it, he's not in that same quadrant, but there's a chance that he might be in the left quadrant. So it's sort of a, there's, there's a little game here that you can play. I'm going to slide it up carefully, and I did it. There is, uh, there's nothing here. So he didn't attack me. All right. And now, by process of elimination, I know that he's not, on the first card he wasn't in these two, but he was in this one. And he's also not in this one. So he's either on this next card, he's going to be here or... Uh, I'm trying to remember the logic here. He's not down here. He's not down there. So he's got to be in the upper card. He's got to be upper and upper. That's what it is. So I can't slide it. I can't slide it. I can slide it down. I can slide it up to reveal the bottom two because... No, that would put him in this one. He's there. He, uh, the last card, he's in the lower left quadrant, but he's also in the upper right quadrant. Or he could be in the upper left quadrant. This is tricky. 
All right, so I want I want to reveal it where it shows this one and this one. So I'm going to slide it that away. Uh, I want to keep this one, <clears throat> and I want to keep. Oh, uh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get attacked because it doesn't matter where I slide it. I guess I could slide it this. Oh, I can slide it this way. That's right. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna slide it this way. And there's the fourth one, which is empty. Okay. So he didn't attack me, and I wake up now. After oh yeah, he was in the upper right and. Oh, he was there. Uh, I'll take a. I'll take two damage. I guess I'm. I did that wrong. It's tricky. It's tricky. I didn't slide it all the way up to the line, but that's on me. All right. So I did. I did encounter him in that lower left. All right. So then what you do is you take the boiler room cards again, and you shuffle them, and then you put them face down like like this, and then you put the awake on, and you're back awake. That is the end of the killer phase. No panic phase because he didn't kill anybody. Upkeep, all these go back into the tableau. One, zero, sprint. It's called focus, 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 focus. Okay. So I don't have a whole lot this turn. Um, all I have is a convince and a close call. I don't even have a walk. I thought I did. I thought I bought. No, I only had two points to buy anything, so I cannot move. That's a bummer. All right. But. I cannot move into that house and search it because I don't have any. I, so basically, that stinks. I couldn't afford to sprint earlier. Um, oh, you know what? I, I am. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna. I'm gonna retro that because I should have known. I can't do anything with these two. I wouldn't be able to move or anything. So I would have spent my two rather than on close call and convince. I would have spent it on the sprint because then I can move and get them out of here. That's what I would have done. So I only get one shot at this because I have no cards in my hand to re-roll. So I need at least one star. And I got one star. So she will move here and say, get out of here. And these two will flee. I'm going to... I'm going to heal two hearts. And it says I can move one space. But I can't go in that house because um, I can't go in that house because. Oh wait, hold on. This goes back to six. I moved one, so this goes uh, down one. So I have five time. Uh, if I move one space, I could go in here and do a search southwest. I could get the megaphone once per action. You may move any victim on the board. Oh yeah. Oh, and then the victim will target and move. Ooh, no, I don't like that. Uh, the target will move towards the nearest victim and kill and, and just kit move. Doesn't kill them. All right. Well, yeah. I'm going to take the long. Re I'll take the long rest and try to heal back. Well, no. And improvise and use all accidents three and four. Okay. Or I get two time. Let's do this. I'm going to take two time. I'm going to go back up to seven. That's the end of my turn. Now I've got seven to buy. I get all of these back. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to get a sprint for two, down to five. I'm going to get a convince for one. I'm going to get a search for two. And then I'm going to get a two rerolls, which takes me down to zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oop! I only take one reroll, and I have one time left, but I I've got my maximum hand count. All right, that is the end of that. It is now the killer phase. There is nobody in his space to kill, so we draw a terror card. This moves back one, and then it says place one new victim in each house that is not connected to a an exit. All right, connected to an exit, connected to an exit in each house that is not connected to an exit. So one here, actually that's connected to an exit. This one's not, this one's not. So it's the ones in the center, basically, yep. The four in the center, everything else has got, is connected to an exit. All right, so four, uh, Four got placed, place one event, and then it says reveal an event. So I got my third and final event. Friendly neighbors. 
Roll one extra dice when resolving convinces. Excellent. I can use that. All right. So um, I did the terror. Uh, no panic. And upkeep. This card goes back here. And now it is my turn. This goes back to six. All right. If I do this right, I could get a lot of these victims out of here. So what I'm going to do is I all I need to do is a convince to move in. I don't have to. I've got... You know what? I need to do a focus to get down to three dice. Let's do a focus. Come on. I'm only rolling two right now. I need a star. I did. I got a star, so this goes down one, and I lose a time. That's okay. But now I get to roll three dice. Now, the convince. Remember, it said you get to roll an extra die when doing a convince. So I got four dice here. What I'm hoping is three stars so I can search that house for free. And I got two stars, and I will absolutely use the... Weak attack and short rest, burn those to turn that to a star. And with three stars, I get to enter this house, take the top item of, of Northwest, which is this. It's, I don't know what it is. It's odds and ends. If you are in a house, you may place a booby trap token in it, one per house. If an enemy moves into the house, discard the token, and the enemy takes two damage. Well... It's got to be a house. If you are in a house, let me place a booby trap token. If an enemy moves into the... Do you discard this? Oh, discard it. Discard the token the enemy takes to. If the enemy moves into the house, discard this to the token. And Okay, so it looks like this is only a one-time use, maybe? One per house. Oh, no, you can keep doing it. Okay. So every house you go in, you put a booby trap. Heck, yeah! All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a booby trap in here. All right, that's pretty cool. That's a cool one. Um, and uh, I didn't do a search. I did not do it. Well, yeah, I did because that counts as a search. So I have to put a search token in here to indicate I took a, a, a card from it because there's only three cards, which means if I want this last one, I got to go in this house. All right, uh, now I need to get out of here. Let's just do a walk, a real simple walk with only with three. All I need to do is move one space. So I just need one star, and I can take two with me. I got one star, so I'm going to take two with me out to the door and say, get out of here. This allows me to take an improvise action, which is this one. And this one lets me take a long rest action. So I'll do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven cards. The walk is done. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I, I don't have I don't have a <laughs> I don't have a card to convince them to let me in again. So, what can I do? Well, I can go in this house and search it. That's uh, Southwest, which is the megaphone. I don't really want that. Um, it moves the killer closer to victims. Bicycle. When you take this, place the bicycle on the street adjacent to you. If you do not have any items in your hands and you are with a bike, you may move yourself and it to any other street on the board once per turn. Ooh. And then, of course, the rifle is in the southeast, which is over here, and it does some damage. Nice. I may have to go grab that. But right now, it's all about getting victims off the board. So walk, focus, sprint, search. Let's go ahead and do the focus card. Since I got three dice, I'm trying to lower it, and I got ah, I didn't get anything. But I can I can turn, I can get rid of the close call and the walk to make one of these a star, which will allow me to move this down one. Just it keeps me rolling three dice, and I think. I'll do the long rest to try to heal back up. Um, by the way, I haven't been tracking my time. Walk, uh, I sacrificed, close call, I sacrificed, and I did a walk. No, I didn't. I didn't do a walk. So, um, yeah, I did. I walked out of the house, which is uh, one time, so I'm down to four. I think I did that already. Uh, I did the convince, which didn't take any time. So, technically, it should be on five, yeah. All right, so I think I'll do the long rest just to heal back up. And I get to roll three dice, and I rolled a star. So I get to heal three. One, two, three. She has six, so all I can do is heal back up to five 
and then six is her max. And it says I lose two times. So I'm down to three. And I can't do anything else. I could go in this house and do a booby trap. But I don't want to burn my sprint. And there's no other close houses that are empty. One, two, three. Uh, I'd rather stay here where the victims are. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chill there. That's it. I'm not going to do anything else. Uh, it is the end of my turn. I have three time left. So I'm going to buy a convince for one. I'm down to two. I'll buy the close call for one. And that's really all I can do. All right. So into my turn, he can kill anybody in his spot. There's nobody there. He hasn't moved in a while. I bet you this is going to be a move card. Nope. You fall asleep. With, while this card in play, you must remain asleep. Reset the boiler room immediately upon exiting it. Reset it. You fall asleep. While this card is in play, you must remain asleep. Reset the boiler room immediately upon exiting it. And I lose a heart. So this is a dark power. So I lose a heart. And it says, while this is in play, the way you get the dark power off, I'm trying to remember how you get the dark power. Um, I can't remember. How do, you, how do you get the dark power off? Let's take a look. Dark power. Um, dark powers. Uh, when drawn, place it above the keyboard. In addition, it extends the health. Place it, whenever the final girl does damage to the killer, they must remove any health markers from minor dark powers before they can remove them from the killers. Oh, okay. So that, I, that a heart goes here. And when I remove it, that goes away. So I got to do damage to him just to get rid of, the, just to become awake. All right, so now remember, I am now, I take this, I put it on the bottom, square this up, and now I am asleep. But again, I can't wake up until I go deal damage to him. So I guess I, guess I got to do that. Um, that was the terror card. No, no, what was that? That was, yeah, that was, how did I get that? That was something that said I was asleep. Oh, yeah, it was this. I, drew, I did draw the tarot card. Okay, so now it is my turn. No upkeep. These all go back into their spot. Zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. All right. So on my turn, I need to go hunt him down, although I don't think I have anything to damage him. I don't. So... Um, so I need to go maybe find a weapon. I don't think you can... I think you can search the house while you're asleep. Mm -hmm. uh, searching. When the search is in the river... Okay. It doesn't say. I think you can search while you're asleep. While you're asleep, you may move around and even search for items. Okay, so I can search. So it'd be nice if I could get to that rifle. So to get to the rifle, I need to enter, say, this house, which is, I'm in here. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Ugh. I need to move four spots, and there's no way to do that with just one sprint. So, but I'm going to try. All right. So I will do a sprint and roll three dice. And I got one star. I can discard two to make it two, which would get me one, two, three. Otherwise, I'm only going to go one, two. I, I I really think I have to do it. And I can't use this. I can't give up the search card, so I'll get rid of the convince and the improvise. I hate to do that, but I'm going to need the close call to re-roll and the search to search the house for that rifle. All right. So I move three. One, two, three. So I'm outside the door. Um, you don't have to convince when you're asleep, I don't believe. I think that's only when you're, if you do, uh, hold on. <laughs> um, when you are asleep, you may move around the board. You, this, uh, it doesn't say whether, awake and asleep. Okay, your current say moving into a house. Um, it, doesn't, it would be on this one. Uh, sleeping. I think, you, I think when you're asleep, you can just move. It doesn't say, or maybe it does. I'm just not seeing. When you are awake, when you are asleep, you may move around the board. 
Yeah, this, and perhaps, yeah, so you can. Yeah, it indicates that you can. So I don't have to convince. I just go in there and search. All right, so um, what did I do here? My action cards, I can't. I did. I used the sprint, but I cannot get in the house because all I've got is a close call and a search. So that is, uh, this went from six to five, and I am also, um, I'm out of cards. can't do anything. So, um, let's see. Oh, that's not good. All right, so he's right next to me. Um, yeah, that's the end of my turn. So with the five, I will buy. I don't need, I'm asleep, so the convince won't help me. I will buy a another sprint because I want uh, for two because I want to get back to him and hurt him with the thing. I'm gonna buy, since I've got three left, I'm gonna buy, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put the sprint back, go back up to five. I'm gonna buy a furious strike for four, which knocks me down to one, but I wanna do some damage to him. And then for that last one, I'll buy a reroll. And that is all I can do. It is now his turn. He kills nobody in his spot. He draws a terror card. Did you hear what happened? I have to draw two events and then draw the next tarot card. Come on. So event, fire, roll a dice and place the fire token in one of these buildings. One to three, the boyfriend house. Four to six, the smallie house. I rolled a three, so it's the boyfriend house. The boyfriend house is there. Any victims in the house or that panic into the house are killed. You or enemies take a damage. The house may no longer be entered or searched. So this one is killed. So his terror track goes up which reveals the dark power, and this house is burned, so I can't go in there ever again. All right, yeah, all right. And then I have to draw another event card. It's raining. Panic victims in the intersection. There are no victims in the intersection. Then move every victim that is on a street space to its adjacent house. There's nobody. So they're all they're all going inside because it's raining. So I drew the two events, and now I draw the next tarot card. And I have to flip this. So uh, let's go ahead and flip this now just to see what it is. Shock factor. It's his epic. If a victim would panic, it is killed instead. Maximum of three per turn. Man, wow. All right, so this. First I lose one. Then the victim targets the nearest victim and moves two boots, which will allow up to four spaces. The nearest victim is right here. If the killer is in the same space as you, this goes down one, but he's not. So, oh no, 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 no. That's not true. It says it moves towards me. So it does move towards me. So he didn't have to even, I didn't even have to draw him to me. If the killer is in you, this goes down one. So I'm back to rolling two dice. That's what it is. All right. Well, I got to do some damage to him. So it's now my turn. There's no panic phase. Now I've got this furious strike and I also will get, oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't put these back at the end of the upkeep. Convince and improvise. And I also didn't get these, uh, which were in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, and they go into my hand. So I'm going to have to get rid of one of these. I'll get rid of one of the close calls. I forgot to get the zero cost cards. All right. So I'm going to do a furious strike. Well, no, nope, I'm going to do a focus first because I need to be rolling three dice. Come on. I just need one star. I didn't get it. I got a failure. So I will play my close call and reroll both of those. And I got a star, so this goes down one, and I lose a time, so I'm down to five. But now I get to roll three dice. Now I'm going to do a furious strike. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I got one star, and I'm going to make that, I'm going to get rid of the short rest and a walk to turn this to a star. Actually, this one, sorry. This one was a blank. All right, so with two stars, I do two damage. And this goes down one, which is excellent. All right. And the only way you can kill him, remember, is when you're asleep. Then I'm going to do a weak attack. 
And I got three stars, of course. And I, he loses another heart. Takes the damage. All right. So we're even now. We've got the same health. Focus, walk, search, and sprint. Well, I need to get in that house. So I'm going to use a walk because I'm asleep. I have to walk it uh, to get in that house. And I didn't get it. I can, do, I can get rid of focus and I, search won't get me. I can get rid of focus and sprint to turn this to a star, which gets me in the house. And now I can do the search. And I got a star, which allows me to, what does one star allow me? One star takes a time. And I donated that, I donated that. I did the walk, which allowed, which took a time. So I'm down to three, six, five, and then I'm down to four. That's what it was. I do the search. Uh, I got one star, which says take the top item card. The top item in the southeast is the rifle. It is a one-handed item, so it goes, or no, it's a two-handed item, so it has to go here, and I can't carry anything else. It has two pips, so it's just a two-shot weapon. Oh, I noticed the pips. The, uh, the, um, the uh, what do you call it? The booby trap. I only get three uses of it. So I've already used one. I already used one. So I'll put two pips on here. I forgot about the pips. I was wondering what those things were for. Now I remember. Two pips. And uh, let's see. I did the search. So I got the rifle. And I'm going to use the last pip or the, the second pip here to place a booby trap because I want him to come in this house. I want him to come on in here. Do some damage. All right. Uh, now, the only other thing I can do, and that, that was it. I am out of cards. I can't run. I can't walk. All I can do is hope he comes in my direction. All right. I have four time. I, I'm not going to get a walk back, so I'm going to need a sprint for two. And for two more, I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a guard because I think he'll attack me. No, he won't. He'll attack them. <sighs> With two, I can either get a search or a close call or a convince. And I'm asleep, so the convince won't work. So I'll just use the close call uh, for one. And that's it. You know what? Yeah, yeah, that's it. All right, his turn. Um, he will stab anyone in his spot. There's nobody there. Um, <laughs> draw a tarot card. The tarot deck has only one more card after this. I'm so sleepy. If you are awake, roll a die. If you are asleep, resolve a boiler room card. And if you take damage, drop the this by one. Okay, so I have to play the boiler room at least one card. So what I'm going to do is this time I'm going to go down. I'm going to just slide it down. Uh, oh, <laughs> there's nobody in here. Uh, if you take damage, move that. I didn't take damage, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave that there, and I'm going to put a piece of tape on it just to hold it in place. I can't, oh, I did damage to him, so I can, it's now, I can, I can choose to wake up, which I really need to do to get these two out of here. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to, I'm going to move it to the right. I'm just going to move it, slide it to the right, and there's nothing there. So that's two for two. All right. Um, he does two damage for every time he attacks, so I need to do this right. If I slide it, I know now that he's not here, he's not here. So on the next card, he could be there. Yeah, the it's it, I get the math of this. Okay, so if I slide it this way, there's I get two chance. I get one chance that he'll be up here. I'm pretty well. I, it's a six of one, half does the other. Okay, so I could slide it up, and I'm hoping that this space doesn't have anything. That's what I'm going to do. So let me let me put a piece of tape on this, and we'll slide it up. And I, I did another one. All right. I should be able to figure this out then. Um, there's only one safe direction to move it, and that would be... All right, so I've got two revealed. So he, I know he's in the lower right. 
I know he's in the lower right. He has to be. Or, no, he doesn't have to be. Where can he not be? I've got two here, two here. He has to be in the upper right. So I don't want to move it up because I've already revealed two of those. So there's only one card left. So he's got to be there. So I can't move it up. And I've revealed it here. So he's got to be there. So the only thing I can do now is go... I can move. I can't move this way. I can't move that. I can move this way. No. I can only move up. And I can't remember how this works. Oh, there he is. So he I I I can't do the math in my head while I'm panicked. All right, so he does two damage to me. But I think that's it. I wake up. Yeah, I do wake up. All right. Where was he on the... I should have known that. He had to be here because he wasn't there and he wasn't there. So, yeah. Ah, oh, well. All right. So, I resolved that. So, I am now awake. So, let's take these cards and shuffle them up again. And uh, put the awake on top. So, I flip these over and shuffle them. All right, that's good enough. Awake. Put that up here. I did damage to him, so this went away, which means I got to put one heart back technically, and this goes away. Um, so that's gone. Okay. Um, this is gone. Let me make sure this is still recording. Yeah. Okay, we're good. All right. Now it is. Panic phase. There are no victims. So all these cards go back into their slots. Search. No, that's sprint. Search. Focus, walk, weak, furious strike. Goes where? Four. Improvise. <laughs> Keep putting these cards in the wrong spots. Walk, short rest, focus, close call. All right. I only have sprint and close call, so i got to get these two victims out of here. So I did put a booby trap in there. So I will play the sprint card and get these two out of this house. Um, the exit is in his spot, but I can keep moving. I believe the rules say I can keep moving them. So I've only got one, which allows me to move two spaces. One, two. All right. I only have one extra victim that can um, do... Let me check that. I, I want to make sure I do that right. So when you take... When you rescue... Panic... Okay, so let me see. The planning, attacking, saving victims. At any point during the action, you're on a green side. Any victims are supposed to be saved. Okay, movement. When leaving a space, you may take up... To, they're scared to death. However, victims will not follow you into the space with a killer. So if you wish to move into killer space, you may not take victims. Of course, if they're... Oh, man. So I couldn't do that. So they go back. They go back. And he can't hurt me. He can hurt them. He can't hurt me because I'm awake. But if he comes in here, that booby trap's going to get him. But he's going to get two victims. So all I can do is maybe sprint to a... Uh, the rifle cannot modify an extra card, but must be able to use it. Make a horror roll. Okay, what I should have done was stayed asleep and moved out there to use the rifle, but we'll deal with that later. All right, so all I can do is sprint. I can sprint up to two spaces. One... I hate to leave these victims, but I can't. They won't move into his spot. So the sprint is done. I still have the close call. I guess I could use the close call to re roll. I'll do that. I'll re roll these two. And I got three stars. So that instead of moving two spaces, I can move uh, three, right? No. Yeah, move up to three. So one. Two, 
Blah. Three. All right. I'm going to go try to pull some of this, this house. I only need to pull one more victim. So that's good. All right. So that's all I got. All right. His turn. He will kill anybody in his spot. There's nobody there. Last terror card. I said don't look back. If there are no exits that have at least one victim, discard and draw the next terror card. Can't. Otherwise, place the killer on any exit that has at least one victim. There aren't any. And then he will target the nearest victim and stab. So he doesn't do anything, but unfortunately, his ultimate gets revealed. Now he will always target me, move, and take two stabs. During upkeep, if you are awake, you lose two hearts and you fall asleep. Time to die. Yeah, this is not good. All right. Um, wow. If you were awake, lose during upkeep, lose two hearts and you fall asleep. All right, so I'm going to, this is bad. Okay, what do I do here? I've got, uh, it's the end of the killer phase. No, it's my, I'm sorry, it's my turn. I moved, now I get all these cards back, and I, I did sprint, so I lose a time. So I got five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I'll do a long rest for five, and that takes me down to zero. So that's all I can do on my next turn. So it is now <laughs> his turn. Um, I moved through, yeah, that was it. <clears throat> so on his turn, he targets me. He moves one boot. One boot allows him to move two spaces. One, two. He stabs twice. Each stab does two, four damage, which knocks me down to my last health. Let's reveal it. It is blank. So I died. <laughs> this one is hard. <coughs> I have been told that the Dr. Fright scenario is very hard, and I have no doubt about that now. But still, that was fun. I mean, I'm laughing. That was fun. I feel like I feel anxious, like I was really, you know, this is this game does that to you. I can tell you. You're watching it. You're not having the same effect that I am playing it. You need to try this game. Find somebody who has it or go grab just the core rules and one, one scenario and play it, and you're going to be hooked. All right. Well, the, you got me this time, Dr. Fright. Poor Sheila. Didn't have any health left. She died. Wah, wah, wah. Once his ultimate ability showed up, I mean, it's called time to die. Come on. You're, you just, you, you're going to die. Uh, and the shock factor, if a victim would panic, it dies instead. So, I mean, I'm, his, 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 uh, his bloodlust was just going to go through the roof. All right, that is all I got. This is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Thanks for joining me on this fun game of Final Girl. I'll be back again soon with another Final Girl. I've got one more scenario and bad guy that I haven't played yet. I will play them, and then I'm going to start randomizing it and, and seeing what happens. So I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you did in the comments. Um, I just don't know if you enjoy this game as much as I am, but it's very fun. So this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Thanks for joining me. And everybody, take care. Blah.